welcome to our Redwood City showroom. I'm Claudia, one of the project managers here. I'm Sophie, another project manager at Abodu. Unfortunately, our counterpart Gabriel was not able to make it today, but we do have Simon on site who can answer any of the questions you might have in the live chat, so feel free to add them below. Uh, today we're going to go over sort of frequently asked questions, what you can expect like an install day to look at, uh, what the role of the project manager is, and yeah, let's get started. Yeah, let's start with the first question. What are major challenges that may affect a project and timeline? That's a question we have a lot from our homeowners. I want to start by saying that it depends a lot on the permit timeline. There are two parts of a project, basically the first part where we are not really active. We have a team that is specialized in getting the permit issued from the city. And during that time, we are more like a point of contact with the homeowner to tell them when they have comments from the city, if there is any third party reports that is needed. And that's the time where it varies. It can be like a week sometimes in some cities like San Jose or a year uh, in another city if a salt report is necessary, for example. So I want to say major challenge is the permitting timeline. That's the main thing that can impact uh, a project. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, another item that can impact your project timeline is PG&E. If you have to do a, a panel upgrade, um, the times really vary depending on if you have an underground upgrade or an overhead upgrade. You know, these times if you get thrown into design and engineering can be around six to eight months. So that, you know, obviously hugely impacts your project timeline um, and something to be aware of if you are going to need to upgrade your panel yeah. uh, in order to fit the ADU. I would say those are the two main impacts, like bigger impacts yeah. on the timeline. Other smaller ones are unforeseen um, issues on site. Um, for example, if you have a pool in your backyard, there might be a gas line from your house to the pool. You don't always know exactly where this gas line is. Sometimes it ends up being right underneath your ADU's footprint. And that's, we discover it when we start trenching and when we locate all the, the lines and then you see the use footprint, so you might need to relocate this. This can take time. So that's an example of what we can find out only when we start on site. Yeah, and I think the final one is just weather. You know, we're outside, we're doing construction, so weather can have a huge impact. You know, when we have the big rainstorms, you know, your trenches get filled with water, it takes time for those to drain. Um, you know, we can't pour concrete. If it's, it's completely downpouring, so um, just sort of things to keep in the back of your mind that can affect your permitting time, or not your permitting time, <laughs> your <laughs> project, overall project time. Yeah, I actually just had this problem where we had the trench open, we installed utilities, we passed inspection, we were all ready to backfill and pour concrete, and then it didn't stop raining for like two months, so we were not able to compact properly the soil to repour concrete. So that's unfortunate, it's something we can't control, the weather. Although sometimes I wish we could. <laughs> I wish we could. <laughs> um, second question, can you describe the process on the fulfillment side after you sign a contract? Um, so where do the project managers step in? Um, basically, you the contract is signed, um, we do our due diligence by reaching out to getting bids from our um, contractors and our craning vendors and we sort of hope that uh, all the work we've done on the front end sort of meets you know is right on point but sometimes you know our our vendors will come back with uh, issues with the craning plan or, or things like that that might have a cost impact so we work with the directly with sales to make sure that all those costs as much as we know is then that then transferred to you as the homeowner, so you guys can know what to expect down the line. Yeah. Um, that's why there is this buffer time in between you sign the first contract and the addenda, which comes usually, I think, a month after. During this time, we go on site with the crane operator to check that there is no problem with the delivery logistics. We check if there is a power line that we need to drop, if there is any tree that we need to trim for the delivery, for safely delivering your units. Yeah, and we also just like doing our due diligence yeah. to ensure that you know you know the maximum cost up front. Yeah, same for the sewer scope. We also do this between you sign the contract and 
the, the addenda because sometimes you need to install an injector pump if we cannot achieve slope. So it's something we can't know when you sign the contract. We need to get inside and get the plumber to check everything. So that's why there is this month where we do everything we can basically to tell you precisely how much your total project is going to cost so that when you sign the addenda you have the best picture possible yeah. of the total cost. Of course there's always unforeseen things, you know, things come up during the permitting process like we mentioned before, uh, but we try to do our best to, to capture all those costs during the addenda period. Yeah. And during permitting, as I said, we have a team that is in charge of the permits but we do stay in touch with you every time the city requires comments, every time the department approves your permit, we give you updates so you know exactly what's happening. When the city requires a third party report, like a source report or a grading and drainage plan, we let you know in advance as well. As soon as we know, we let you know. And that's basically all we do during the permitting process, just giving you updates yeah, as we receive them. And then once we get into construction, you know, we have a pre-construction meeting with uh, our GC on site and then as well as with the client just to sort of prep you for construction. And then during construction, you know, we're in constant communication because you're going to have people on site. Not every day, but, uh, you know, consistently. So, so trying to give you a picture of where we're at in the project and, and what you can expect coming up, um, you know, coming up to delivery day, which is like the big exciting day. I think one thing you mentioned every day is important that people won't be on site every day because they're in construction. Sometimes we need to wait for the city to come and inspect our work before we can move forward. So sometimes clients get frustrated because there is nothing going on on site for a couple of days. It might be just because we're waiting for a certification letter from a source engineer or a form check letter from a surveyor, which we need to pass the form inspection. That's one example when we're just waiting for the inspection to happen before we can move forward, pour concrete or backfill the trenches for utility inspection, for example. So it's normal on the construction side that they won't be workers on site every single day, but we do try to make it as efficient as possible with the city requirements, with all the inspections that we need to pass. Yeah, definitely. Um, when else do you see us? You'll see us on delivery day. All day. Uh, yeah, that's sort of a, a big day. And then we um, work with the GCU for post delivery construction. So, again, depending on your property um, and how the project has gone on the front end, you know, you might have that utility work on the back end. So, we, we close that out um, after your unit's been delivered. And we work with the homeowners on their punch list. Um, you know, the, the unit is moving when it's traveling to you. So, you might see some like cracking and we do like a full patch of painting of the interior and any sort of minor um, issues that, that kind of transpired during shipping. We, we work on that with uh, the homeowner and the GC. And one thing to note too is we do two walkthroughs with you, with uh, the homeowner. One during delivery day, so as soon as your unit lands, basically we visit it with you and we note everything that needs fixing inside the unit. So that's the first punch list and we make sure that everything is done before key handover. But during key handover, when everything is supposed to be finished with your unit, we do another walkthrough with you just to make sure that when you get the keys, you're happy with what you get. And if there is anything else that needs to be fixing, we, we fix it as well. Yeah. So and then have... once that key handover happens, we also have another internal team, warranty team. So, you know, we're still here. We're still available. We're not going away by any means. So. Uh, they can always help you out post key handover as well. Okay, next question. I think we almost covered it. What are the project manager responsibilities <laughs> yeah. for an Avadu project? Um, I think it starts with sort of the reviewing the proposals with sales before the project even sells. So um, sales, you'll see our sales representatives on site for your feasibility studies and they bring that information uh, to us and we sort of walk through what we're seeing, what they saw, and, and how to best incorporate everything into that original contract that you guys uh, get sent. Yeah. Um, you I think that that lags in most companies, but I was surprised when I joined Abodu and I love the fact that the salespeople review everything with the project manager who are actually going to be <laughs> implementing the project on site. We review every proposal, so there is no surprise. They don't sell something that 
they can't do after because we check everything and I love yeah. the proximity that we have with the sales representative even if you don't see us until you actually sign your contract we are there working on your project the yeah. in the background and then we become the main point of contact and I think that's our main responsibility after the contract is signed if you have any questions we are here for you we'll always be here to answer any questions if you need to meet us on site if you have any concern we'll be the person to, to contact basically so it's easier for you you only have one person that you need to contact from the contract signature until key handover well yeah like the handover so you sign the contract with sales and then there's an official meeting like a handover meeting between sales you guys and us uh, and that's the, the intro where we take over as that main point of contact officially officially yes <laughs> Uh, we also coordinate with all the third party reports like the civil, in civil engineers, the general contractor, the crane operator, the sales engineers. Basically, we orchestrate your project so that you don't have anything to do other than answering our questions and we ask you which color you want your ADUs. <laughs> That's it. Um, okay, next question. Can you describe what goes on at Install Day? Um, A lot. Yeah, <laughs> it's a fun and exciting day. Um, typically, the project managers will get on site when the traffic control uh, operators are are scheduled to arrive as well, mm -hmm. um, ensuring you know we've already sort of three days, at least three days before, have put out like no parking signs depending on the property location and how much access we need for the crane and for the uh, truck that will be holding the unit. And the neighbor notices as well yeah. that we deliver a week in advance so all of your neighbors know that something is going to be happening that they won't hopefully won't complain too much after we let them know that there is an ADU delivery coming out that there will be no parking signs so we let them know in advance so they can prepare and sometimes we do have to shut down the street because there's not enough space or things like that so we try to include as much information in that neighbor notice so so no one's majorly inconvenienced um, but yeah, day of, we work with the traffic control operators to um, set up any detours and, and ensure you know, that the space, there is enough space for the crane to set up and the, and the unit to be delivered. Um, the, the crane setup usually takes between one and two hours, depending on how big the crane is and how many counterweights it needs. So it's a full process. It's usually what takes the longest on delivery day, basically yeah. the crane setting up and then Disassembling. Disassembling after. Yeah, and then so the crane will set up. Um, hopefully, we've timed it perfectly that the unit, the truck with the unit, will roll up right as the crane is finishing their setup. Uh, the then the GC's crew will go ahead and unwrap your unit and get it ready to be rigged to fly in the air. So that probably takes around 30 minutes for yeah. them to to get it unwrapped, get it strapped in. Um, you know, the crane operators will then do their connection and sort of test the weight of the unit, make sure it's, it's really yeah, even and balanced um, and ready to fly. We'll have uh, like our safety meeting with the whole team, um, just because we want to ensure, well, of course, that you're not in the house, but also that you know there's no one in the, the flight path area, uh, just to make it as safe as possible for everyone. Yeah, that's what you don't like usually, when we ask you to step outside your backyard during delivery, <laughs> because for safety concern, no one can be in the house or in the backyard during delivery. But it's fast, usually it takes maybe five to 10 minutes, the yeah, actual- Yeah, in Well, depending on time. how, <laughs> if there's like the trees they need to get through or things like that, it can get, it can be a little bit longer, True. but it's typically like 10. And then you get to see your unit in your backyard and you get to get inside and do the first walkthrough. Yeah. And uh, sometimes the city inspector will stop by just to check that the encroachment permit was respected, which we always do, so we never have a problem with city inspectors, but they like to stop by. Yeah, I guess that's the other piece of the project manager role. We work with, you know, we have the permitting team that works on the building permit, but our project managers, uh, work with the cities to pull the encroachment permit. So uh, we work with the crane operators and um, with the traffic control to come up with a plan that we submit to the city for approval. And that's really important. That's sometimes why we need to delay a delivery a couple of days because the city sometimes is really demanding. Yeah. We can't deliver if it's a school day, if there is a school nearby. So there are some rules we need to respect on delivery. Exactly. How is an 
I would do installed. Uh, two options, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you could create it in, or you can roll it in. Yeah. <laughs> Most of our projects, I would say maybe ninety percent get created in. Get yeah. created in because it's just easier, faster. Jack and roll is a process that can take a while depending on how far your unit has to travel. So essentially they'll land your unit short and we have to make sure there's a flat area where they can set up their rigging material mm -hmm. and they like crane it inch by inch to get on top of the foundation. That's why we avoid it when we can because usually we need to remove some hardscape and landscape in the backyard so when we can just crane it on top of the foundation directly that's what we go for yeah but again it gives you you know if your property is a little harder to access jack and roll can be potentially a, a solution to, yeah. to get the unit in definitely less invasive than having it built on site yeah uh, what is the length of an average project yeah we were we were talk, chatting about <laughs> this but, uh, we decided to answer in two parts yeah. <laughs> the first part is permitting which can take, I think I mentioned earlier, between a week and a year, depending on the city, depending on where are your house is, if you are in a liquefaction zone, zone yeah. if uh, you need a source report, if you need the grading and drainage, if you're in a flood zone, it can also take longer depending on which city you're in. But yeah. the timeline we decided to share because we have more info because we can control it, yeah. is from permit issuance to actual key handover, we think it's an average of three months yeah. on all projects at least. Uh, so for yeah, starting the &E, yeah. uh, like Sophie mentioned, grading and drainage, um, just all those different inspections that we have to to hold after you know the unit delivers. Um, on average, I'd say around yeah. three months. Three months, yeah, to build everything and have it ready for you to move in. What happens after install day? I think Claudia already started mentioning it, but usually what happens after install is we start trenching from the ADU to the front of your house to connect water, sewer, and electrical to your main panel. When there is a panel upgrade, we also work on that at the same time. Then we do a shear. We have a shear inspection, so basically, you know, that may, final connection between your Bodu and the foundation that we built. Um, we'll do a shear connection and that has to be inspected before we can add your fascia board to cover it up and make it, you know, look nice good. Seem and look good and seamless. <laughs> you know. um, and then we can install your deck, whatever size you choose. Yeah, and then once the utilities are all, those final connections under the unit have been made, we um, go in to test all the utilities in there, make sure everything's in mm -hmm. proper working order. All the appliances as well we test everything before key and over to make sure your oven works your stove works your fridges but nice one thing to know you know sometimes we can test it but once you start using it you might find like there could be you know like a smaller like water heater issue or things like that that we look, don't know until you're sort of consistently using that the the appliance or the the utility, I don't know what you call it. Um, but That's why we have warranty. Yeah, exactly. But Jesse, our warranty guy, can always um, help out if, if you experience any issues uh, post key handover. Difficult question. This one is for you, Claudia. I give it to you. Can you show a time where you have a difficult construction process and how you successfully overcame it? Yeah. Um, I, like Sophie mentioned, um, pools are a big one. I had a project where we had a pool like clear across the other side of the property. The bodu was going to go, you know, in the middle of the property, and um, we did some potholing to try to find out where the lines from the main house were going into the pool. Um, but when we started searching for them, we discovered that there was like ten different conduits and lines, and it ended up that the Pool contractor had put in empty conduits just in case they wanted to like one day do solar or one day add more power into that area. So basically we would pothole and then we would find, you know, trees of like four or five conduits going in every direction. Um, and so in the end we, you know, going through different like cost uh, scenarios with the homeowner, 
realize that you know they have an electrical line and an electrical line is easier to sort of reroute versus like a gas line mm -hmm. um, and and so they ended up switching their pool from a gas uh, heater to an electric heater and we just were able to find out where the line uh, for both water and electrical pivoted off um, and just did sort of like a, a reconnection around the perimeter of the Bodo. Um, in this case, we had to move it sort of far out because they also got hit with the grading and drainage uh, from the city. So um, we had to make sure we had enough space to do our drainage plan. So French drains and a dry well, um, but you know, obviously it was, had major time impacts and cost awesome. impacts. What would you say? I would say like probably like three weeks. Maybe three weeks. Month. Yeah, okay. just to find out where all the lines were going, find out what lines were connected back to the house and things like that. So it's a lot of detective work on our end. Three weeks is nothing compared to the nine months to a year of PG&E timeline. That's so true. that's why we said it's a minor yeah. <laughs> impact. Sophie, yes, I know you have yeah. some favorites. Do you yes. want to share one of your favorite projects? I have a favorite. It was an unexpected, easy project, which I love. Uh, it was in North Bay. So basically we had to deliver a dwell house next to a vineyard. So the road to access this house was tiny. There were vineyards on both sides, so there was no way we can take anything down. So everything looked complicated on this project, the delivery access, we had to install fire sprinklers, we had a pg and &E panel upgrade, all those little things that usually impact your timeline, but we were able to go from permit issuance to key handover in a month for some amazing reason. <laughs> and it was a really beautiful property. Uh, pg &E was really reactive and we didn't need any transformer update or anything like that which made, made the panel upgrade really easy, it was done like in two weeks. And then fire sprinkler, this time we didn't need to upgrade the water meter because we had a, a well, so that was also the good news and the homeowner just had to install a pump uh, for the fire sprinklers. We also had solar panels which can take some time on project, but yeah it was my favorite because it looked difficult. In the end, the homeowner was really happy that he could move in after uh, only a month, and it looked really amazing. I think it was uh, best looking so far, <laughs> on my end at least. So we just want to kind of circle back on that question around average project timelines, um, just so there's no confusion and you know yeah. that you guys have the most available information. Um, but what we see on average from that contract uh, signature is around nine months. So nine months for permitting and then construction. Um, yes, it's also nine months. I've seen it less, obviously, for my other project, North Bay. I think it was three or four months from contract signature to actual uh, key handover. But yeah, on average, it's yeah nine months, I would say. Yeah, I've definitely had some projects that yeah. have been created in six months, depending on the property, right? It depends like how far you're trenching or if you already have, you know, like the, a clean out or, mm -hmm. or things like that, then it's really easy to us, for us to come in and just sort of, you know, build our foundation, drop your unit and connect those utilities. So it really varies um, but by what, the property. What never changes is that we always try to make it as efficient as possible and to deliver as soon as possible. So we just do our best. Uh, I know most people ask me like, is there anything I can do to just make you move faster? We are already doing Try, everything yeah. we can <laughs> to make it move faster. Trust me, we are doing everything we can. That's very true. Uh, well, I think that concludes our webinar today. Yeah. I hope you got some nice information on behind the scenes and you got to understand a little bit more what our role as project manager is at Abodu. Yeah, and of course, if you ever have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to us at hello at abodu.com. Um, the next, there's gonna be a slide at the end that has our contact information um, for, for our reps here at Abodu. And then of course, if you have any other questions right now, you can feel free to live chat Simon, our project yeah. manager who's Simon online. Simon, <laughs> Thanks, Thank guys. You. Bye. Bye.